Okay, this video shows how to use a debugger to debug functions in Visual C++. So you'll see that um, we're using the program debugging functions in C++. Make sure that you've already loaded that into your Visual Studio program. And um, you'll notice here that there are four functions. We have get input radius, get input operation, do area, and do circumference. And what we're going to do is take a look at a couple of these functions through the debugger. So we're going to set some breakpoints. Let's set a breakpoint at line 22, which is just before we call get input radius. And we're also going to scroll down here and set a breakpoint at do area. So make sure that you have a breakpoint at the do area function. Okay, and we're going to take a look at, um, at what happens now. So let's click on our play button and our screen will show up. And I want to just show you that nothing's shown up here yet. We're not even prompt for anything and that's because we set a breakpoint right at the very first statement. Okay, so let's analyze our debugger at this point. So at this point uh, we can see that there's some local variables that are in main, the radius and which op and down here at the bottom we can see where the radius values are uh, the radius value and the which op value are set to some random values just like they are up here okay and now we're going to call this function get input radius and we are going to take the result of that and assign it to the radius so let's step into the function so what we're going to do is instead of doing a step over we're going to say step into. That's how you go inside of a function when you want to actually look at each statement inside the function. So then our window is going to jump down to the beginning of this function. And we're just now going to click step over. Now we're inside the do loop. Notice that um, the autos update has happened here where now we're looking at rad because that's the local variable. So that's the variable we need to pay attention to. Radius and which op are local to main, but not to this function. So since they aren't visible in this function, we don't get to see what their values are right now. So we can click on, um, we can look at this when we see that there's a see out statement that's going to execute. So we can click on our step over and our CN is executing now. So now it's prompting us to enter a radius. So first I want to test my input validation, so I'm going to put in a minus 9. And when I do that, then we can see that um, my debugger has now gone down to the, um, the bottom of the do while. So we're going to step through it, and since the radius was negative, it's going to prompt me again. Okay, And here what I'll do is I'll just click continue so that I can get to the prompt statement again and I'm going to put in 5. Okay, so now we are <clears throat> at the point where the program is asking us to input an operation and so what the operation I'll choose is area. Now because we put a breakpoint at the do area function it means that we are going to stop at that function. So there's a couple of things that we can look at here. Since we're at the do area function, we can also tell where we were in main. If we look over in the call stack, we can see where the top function is do area. That's because that's the current function that we're in. But main is also on the stack because that's the function that called do area. Okay, so notice that it says that it's line 30. So if we scroll up to where line 30 is, then we can see that that is this point in main where the function is actually being called. So the computer keeps track of where the function was called from, so it will also know where they come back to. And that's what we're going to take a look at now. Okay, So in this function, there's nothing special other than that we're going to do a return, and we're going to return the result of the um, pi times the radius squared, which is the area. 
So let's do a step over, which is going to step us into the function. And we can now see that the value of pi, which is what we needed as our constant, it tells us what the value of pi is. Radius is 5 because that's the value that we entered in to the, um, to the input prompt and is what was passed into the parameter here is 5.0. So that's the radius that we're going to use. And then we click step over again. So now it's done the computation and now we're at the very end of the function where the curly brace closes and we're going to click on step over again which now takes us back to main which is what you expect your function to do when you return you return back to where it was called from okay notice that at this point though we know that the radius is five we know that because that's what we passed into the function um, which op is a which is area because that's what we chose up here in the get operation function we got that value um, we also now know that area is going to return It's telling us that area is going to return 78.53 which is the area of a um, of a circle with the radius of 5 but notice that the variable area has not been set it still has that random um, assigned value which is the minus 9.25 and that's because we are currently at the statement area equals do area radius we've just finished the function but we haven't actually done the assignment so if we click step over it will then perform the assignment and then it sets the area and notice that that um, do area return has also gone away and now if we look at that we've just done our output we can see that now it will output that what the area is equal to and click continue to finish the program and now we've looked at how you use the debugger to examine functions you can set breakpoints either at the point of the call or you can set breakpoints inside the function itself here we set it at the function header but you can also set breakpoints anywhere inside of a function like if I want to set it here for get input operation I could set it there and that breakpoint will work as well so hopefully you can now use the debugger to help you not only understand functions but to debug functions that are not behaving as you would expect thank you Hello, this video is about debugging in Visual C++. The techniques shown here are very similar for other IDEs such as Xcode and code blocks. We'll be using the debugging if then statements program that was provided for you and you should have that loaded at this time. If not, pause the video, load the file, and then start the video again. The debugger is a program that works within the IDE that allows you to pause the execution of your program and then examine the state of different variables that are in your program. The debugger is a very useful tool used by many programmers every day. In order to start using the debugger, the first thing we have to be able to do is pause the program and tell the debugger we want to stop at a certain point. We do that using what's called a breakpoint. In Visual Studio, out here in the gutter area is where you would click to set a breakpoint. So I'm going to click there and notice that now I have a breakpoint set on line 14. This is where the debugger is going to stop, and when it stops during execution, I can look at the values of temperature, for example. Okay, we're going to set another breakpoint at line 10 because I want to see the value of temperature before I get the output. Okay, so now let's start debugging. We'll click on the play button, and you can see that my debugger took over and it's paused right there on um, on line 11 because that's the next statement that can be executed and it's paused right at the see out statement if I look at my console window I don't see anything yet that's because the see out statement hasn't output it yet okay so in order to go to the next statement which is the the um, CN 
I would actually have to tell the debugger I want to go to that next statement. But before that, I want to see what the value of temperature is. So I can hover over the variable temperature and it tells me the value is negative 9.25 and what looks like a bunch of garbage. Or I can look down here in the auto section because this shows me all of the local variables and I can see that same value is here. Okay, so this lets me know that my variable has been uninitialized or has been initialized to some random number. Okay, so to go on to execute the program to the next breakpoint, what you do is you click on continue. And now I get my prompt. I'll put in the number 80 and hit return. And I don't see an output message. Well, that's because I have another breakpoint set. And we can see that in this window, our breakpoint has highlighted again. Temperature has changed to 80. But let's take a deeper look at this window. So let's click on the Visual Studio window. And we can see that, again, inside the source code, this is where the breakpoint is stopped right at the if statement. We can look at the current value of temperature. We can even hover over temperature and see its current value. And so now what I want to do is step through the if else statement to make sure that it's actually going to output the same thing. So to do that, I use these controls up here. There's a control called step over. And if you click on step over, what will happen, it will execute the next statement and then pause um, at the statement after that. So our next statement is the if statement to check to see if the temperature is less than or equal to 32. Well, we expect that to be false. So let's click step over. It executed it and then it stopped at line 16. It didn't do the C out. It jumped directly to line 16. That's because the temperature being less than or equal to 32 is false. So that goes to the else if. The same thing should happen here. We expect it to be false. But let's do a step over and see what happens. It's false. And if we keep doing this, these step overs, we'll go through the program stepping through it one step at a time. Finally, we find one that's true and now we're sitting at the output statement for it's warm and comfortable. Well, we're not going to see that. So if we look up here, we're not going to see that yet because we haven't actually stepped to it. Okay, so let's click on step over again. Okay, when I click on step over again, then I can see that it says, oh, it's warm and comfortable. That executed the see out statement. And at this point, I think I'm done debugging. So if I click continue, then the program will keep, keep executing to the next breakpoint or till it gets to the end of the program. And in this case, there is no breakpoint. So when I click continue, the program finishes and we're done. That is a basic introduction to the debugger in Visual Studio.